Starting a brand new run. It's all new items this time. We should have a brand new seed as well, so I have no idea what this world will look like. Are these dungeons that we're delving into? Right, here we are. Starting. No weapon, nothing. All we can do is move around. I love it when games start like this. Oh, check it out. I've walked straight to the blade twice in a row. Sweet. What we got here? HP booster. Oh, look at that. That looks like a secret to me. Is that a... Oh, it is! It's a secret bridge to the other relic on this level. Sweet! 25% move speed is awesome. By the way, these um, these relics that I'm picking up, like 25% move speed, are all stackable. So if I got four stacked up move speeds, I'd be moving pretty dang fast. 100% faster. Yeah, the health and mana orbs. Right, yeah, those things. They're awesome, right? I spent a whole week doing those. It was totally worth it, though. I was like, you know what? I'm spending a long time on these, but they're going to look good. And that's going to really help. And it, it does. It really gets you into it. You're like, all right, sweet. Look at that cool sloshing liquid. Cool. I'm glad you like those bubbles, too. And there's kind of a weird shader going on. I need to make it a little bit better. Oh, I knocked both those guys off. To wait. Are they stuck down there? Dude, that guy got stuck in the middle of randomness. That's a funny bug. I'm ca This is kind of a funny thing, but I'm at the point in my game development career. I used to be very anal and tight about my code and my game. I always wanted to have everything totally bug free and perfect. Totally most optimal code ever written. Look at that, we got another 25% move speed. This is great. And so now, now that I now that I'm getting a little more wisdom or experience, I guess, in my game development career, I'm starting to see how fun it is when a video game has exploits. And when there's an exploit, it's on the player. It's not that that's the game's fault. If a player knows about an exploit, they're willfully using that exploit to it becomes their choice whether they want to use it or not basically and so there's a way that the game can be circumvented in its design and whatnot you can break the game and that is a super fun and powerful uh, thing as a player and to, I forgot about the teleport I haven't even been using this thing sweet yeah that's I love this thing cool so this run we've got the blade so far and we've got blink um the other weapons i could have gotten are the bow which um which is pretty fun then the boomerang which is also a, a ranged weapon and fun um the other mobility items i could have gotten besides the blink orb oh, i really want to change that button the other mobility items i could have gotten are jump which is a new ability i just created which is super Super cool that you can finally just jump, and um, it, it launches you up in the air a little bit. Uh, then there's also the boots, which allow you to run super fast. And then there is also levitate, which is like jump, but you hold it to use matter points to fly around. Whoa, another 50 hit points? How come I got two? I got move speed twice, and I got health twice. Oh. I can, um, let me answer my own question. <laughs> um, I got those things twice because it's, it's a random based on what tick it is. So whatever time stamp you hit that item and open up that chest, it will randomly decide what item to, ch to give you based on your time stamp at that current point. So it's just totally random. doesn't matter at all whether you have the item already. So maybe it... Whoa, what happened? What is going on? This is, this is really weird. Exit craziness! What happened? Where am I? Like I can't even use God mode to get out of this. Oh, there. Oh, that's... <laughs> Or 
cloaks. Oh man, I have so much. I have a full inventory already, and I've gotten like four new items. Three. Oh, sorry. Will the enemies drop health potions? No. So that is um. That is the whole creative or gameplay tension of Wraithbinder in its in its solo slash co-op mode. You are delving into these dungeons with whatever health you can possibly find along the way. You don't get healed by uh, by enemies. You can't get a heal ability. Um, you basically have to. There, you can find little red health orbs and buy them, um, and they cost like 50 gold. So I could buy a couple health orbs if I can find any. Um, you can also find those a relic called the the HP booster, which I've gotten two of on this run. Where there's another one. I now have a ton of actual total health. My total health has gone up to 240, and um, and that also gave me back 50 every time I get one. So that's another way you can get back a little bit of health is by getting one of those HP boosters. It will actually give you back a little bit of hit points. But those are the only two ways so far that I've designed so you can gain back any health. Um, so, health is paramount to your run. Like, if you don't, if you can't, if you lose, if you lose too much health, you die, and you go back to the ship, and you start over. New run. There's also a PvP mode to Wraithbinder. It's this arena, and you can fight in the arena, and everything works totally differently in that, in that mode. So your health, you can get healed at these, um... Uh, little mender things near your base and it's just a totally different thing where you can fight in teams and and everything so PvP mode is a lot different than this dungeon crawling mode man my character's fast oh where was that boss at I wasn't paying attention Dang, I got hit by his charge. I have a shield. I don't know if I'm gonna beat this boss. Watch out! Oh, dang! Oh, come on. Oh! I feel like I was close. Alright, that was fun. So, yeah, you can return to your ship at will. Um. And, uh, but you still lose gold if you, if you quit, basically if you save and quit, you, you, beat, you lose like half your gold or half your light, but that depends on your, your light retention attribute. So for example, I could spend some of my light points right now and I've got this basically in a, like a blueprint, I guess you could call it for the gold retention attribute. So you can find these items throughout your runs, which unlock more and more attributes. There's like health attribute, gold retention, um, attack speed, move speed, melee defense, melee attack, ranged attack and defense, explosive attack and defense. There's all these different attributes you can get, right? And then you can power them up with your, your light. So there I, I put some into my gold retention. I get 0.5% I get more gold, reta gold retained in every run. What's up, Jay Novice? So, today's stream, we did this new enemy, the Raz from Songbringer. And this is his two dimensional version. And here we have his three dimensional version. So, the Raz enemy in Songbringer had one more feature I'd like to add where he can shield himself by closing his eyeball. That black thing in the middle is basically his eyeball. That's what he uses to sense the world visually. 
So yeah, we can fight this guy and he pesters the heck out of you. He's very hard to beat with just a bow. Which is all the weapon I, I have right now. What's he doing in the corner? No, he's running away. What are you doing, man? So yeah, you can fight him. And if you have enough matter points, I should get some matter points built up. There we go. If I have enough matter, I can bind him as a wraith, so let's check that out. See what that's like. There. You guys are hard. I really need to work on these. On uh, I need to adjust to how fast this enemy is. But there he is. I have a bound of Roz as a as a a wraith, and he totally follows me perfectly everywhere. <laughs> What are you doing up here? And he can even follow me across the jump bridge. Yeah, let's go, dude. Woo! Alright, there you have it. Thanks for watching today's stream. Be at ya next Wednesday with another live stream, making the game Wraith Binder. Hope you enjoyed that fun uh, play at the beginning of this video. And, uh,. We'll catch you next time, alright? Later, everybody.